Welcome back. Today I'm continuing the process to convert my 1981 DeLorean into an electric vehicle. And on today's episode, I'm going to continue the process of fabricating battery boxes. I have two small battery modules remaining and I just got the parts in to fabricate these and weld them up from Send, Cut, Send. This is Project Lightning. As with most parts that I receive from Send, Cut, Send, I first have to spend a few minutes cleaning them up. I use a die grinder to remove the start and stop lines on the edges of the part and to scuff up the edges to prep them for welding. Next, I use 1, 2, 3 blocks and corner magnets to hold the parts in place, making sure that they are perfectly aligned before tack welding them together. The design of these boxes is very simple. It's made out of 3mm mild steel, roughly 1 8 of an inch. The bottom, back, and sides make up the main box structure. One of these boxes is mounted directly to one of the large battery boxes, so it doesn't need a top, but the other one will at some point down the line. The remaining four pieces make up the front, sides, and bottom of a cover plate that attaches to the front of the main box. The battery modules have threaded rods that mount to the front and back plates, so this piece has to be removable in order to install and remove the modules. The cover is then fully welded up, and here is where I made a mistake. You can see that I'm welding to the inside of the cover, but that area forms what will eventually be a seal. Once I realized my mistake, I welded the outside of the cover, then ground off the weld on the inside. You can see some sparks flying while welding here, and it's because I'm nearly out of argon. You can also see a little bit of brown contamination around these welds, and that's from the same thing. Every time you get a splatter like that, it also potentially contaminates the tungsten, making the problem worse. I'm not a very experienced welder, so I'm learning as I go. As soon as I refilled the bottle and switched to a clean tungsten electrode, these issues went away. I also stitch welded the inside of the main box. Stitch welding is a process where you make intermittent welds rather than one long continuous weld. This box has plenty of strength like this, and if I need it to be watertight in the future, I'll use seam sealer. The last thing left to do is to attach the cover to the main box. I clamped the cover in place, then marked where I wanted the holes. I drill all the way through the cover and the main box with a 5mm drill bit. Then I put a Clico in to hold it in place and move on to the next hole. Clicos are temporary spring-loaded fasteners and they are really useful for situations where I need to hold two pieces of sheet metal together tightly. They go on easily and make sure that nothing moves around while I'm drilling the other holes.
Once I drilled all the holes in the sides, I took off the clamps and drilled through the cover with a 6mm drill bit and deburred the holes. Then, I tapped the main box with a 6mm tap using a drill guide block. These blocks help make sure that the tap goes in perfectly straight and square. With the button head screws installed, I then repeat the previous steps to drill and tap four additional holes on the bottom of the cover. This episode is a bit shorter than some of my previous battery box builds, and it's all due to Send Cut Send. I'm able to design the battery box using Fusion 360, make sure it's perfect, then send it out for laser cutting. The cost to get these cut out was roughly $230 each. This is a bit more expensive than building it out of angle iron, but saves hours of time, and the end result is a lot nicer. Let's take a look at the finished box, ready to be painted. I did forget to show these little side rails here. They are spacers that are simply tacked into place. The welds came out pretty decent and are certainly strong enough to do the job. And with that, our small battery boxes are complete. Now one of these is gonna be attached to our large rear battery box, and the other one is gonna be installed like this up front in the gas tank area. So if this seems like a fun project, you won't wanna miss out on those next episodes. So please, show me that you're interested and give me your support by subscribing. This is Project Lightning.